excited to be here with you this morning, and uh, uh, it's my privilege to, to bring this morning's word, and so we're going to continue with our series uh, routine, and so I'm excited. Uh, if you're online, we, we want you to connect with one of our hosts on there as well, just kind of just say, hey, I'm here, so where you're from, it's always nice to know where you're from, and so if you could do that, that would be awesome. So this morning, before I get, get continue uh, to, to, to get going and stuff, I'm, I'm going to pray. Father, we thank you uh, for your goodness, God. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. I pray that you uh, use this message, God, and, and you touch hearts, God. And it's not about my words, God. It's not about uh, my abilities or anything like that, God. I just, we just thank you for, for what you're doing, Lord. We want to bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. So I got this cool little video queued up here in just a second. But uh, investing and inviting is uh, this morning's, uh, this week's uh, theme is investing and in, in inviting, especially when we got two weeks coming on with uh, Back to Church Sundays. And so we're going to be investing our lives into people. So this morning, are you ready? All right. like every week, but would you like to ride to church with me? Oh, come on, Mrs. Edwards, you'll like my church. We have some hot music. It may not be what you're bumping at all, but it's hot. We get down. What do you say, Mrs. Edwards? Oh, uh, I suppose. I've heard it said that 80% of first-time church visitors come because someone personally invited them. All people need to feel loved and wanted, and for some people, it just takes having someone offer to give them a ride to church. We have something great going on at this church. People's lives are being transformed by God's love. Your homework this week is to find at least one person who could use a little more of that love and invite them to come with you next week. Trust me, it's worth the extra effort. Mrs. Edward, you want to listen to some music on the way? Go ahead, your choice. Okay, here we are. You know what's sad about that is that that's going to be some of us when we're like in our, in our, in our, in our, in our 60s and 70s, we're going to be listening to like, you know, the hardcore rap, like, you know. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I, it's, it's funny if you even, you even you hear uh, and you see folks now who, who grew up in the 60s and the 70s and they listen to, like, some of the, 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 the heavier uh, classic rock and you're just like, man, you used to get down when you were younger. So that's going to be some of us who live, listen to hip-hop. That's not going to be me, though, because I'm not a fan of hip-hop, but there's going to be some of you folks in there that's going to be like, Ugh. It's going to be like Nick back there, just an old man, just uh, bumping like that. So this morning, we're talking about investing and inviting people. So one of the things about we're going to be talking about here is in, in the book of Matthew and the book of John. And so if you can cue your, your Bibles or you go to your, your apps or anything on your phone, uh, uh, we're going to be going to, to Matthew. Matthew's the, the first book in the New Testament, and John is the... Uh, the fourth book in the New Testament, just to kind of give you a reference where we're going to be at. So we're talking about investing and inviting people around us to know Christ, not just to a building. It says 80% of people have said that they would come to church if they were invited by a friend. Friend is a key word. We have our greatest influence on those around us. That includes our friends, coworkers, and family. There's a relationship and trust that has been formed and developed over a period of time. So in the book of Matthew, chapter 4, we're going to look at uh, 
Jesus' first disciples. Jesus, verse 18, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Verse 19, come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. Other, ver other version says, and I will make you fishers of men. Verse 20, at once they left their nets and followed him. Jesus says, come and follow me. I will make you fishers of men. I believe, and one of the things I believe, a mistake as, as, as believers, as Christians, we do is that we don't invite people that are close to us, the people that are in our inner circle, to know Christ. And one of the things, I'm not, I, don't, I, I don't want you to get confused. I don't want you to think I'm saying you need to preach Jesus in every conversation that you're in with people. I don't want you to feel like, okay, every time I talk with somebody, I got to sprinkle a little bit of Jesus. That's not what I'm talking about this morning. First, we've, we've already built a relationship with someone. And, it, and you're, you're probably thinking in your mind, okay, maybe I, I, I have some close people in my mind that, I, that I've been talking to, some coworkers, some, some people who really actually know me. Is that we don't invite those who are close to us. We've engaged in pleasantries. We've engaged in small talk. We've, we, we've shot the breeze. We've talked about random things. And, and so there's a, there's, a, there's a trust that's already there. One of the things about when you, when you have friends and you have close, people close to you is that there's folk, those folks, those people, those family members, they know that you're genuine. That's why they're close to you. They know that you're authentic. Another thing is that the people in your life, they actually know you. You've built a relationship over time. You usually hang out with those uh, around you in, a, in an intimate setting. Uh, once you get to know someone, uh, there's deeper conversation. We all, we've all had those crazy conversations with somebody, and there's just a, a deeper conversation that we have. Most people outside of this building, they don't trust us or they don't trust you. If you, go, if you were to go to Walmart right now, if you were to go to the, to, to the mall right now, you go, to, go into the parking lot, you get out of your car, and what do you do? You lock your door. Why? Because you just don't trust people, right? At night, when you go home and you're, re you're ready to go to bed, my wife makes me go check the back door, lock the back door, lock the front door. Why do we do that? Because we don't trust people. We don't trust others. And it's the same thing that we do to people when we in just invite them to, to, to something. People will only go out of their way if they have a connection with somebody. You have to have a connection. You have to have a, a gap that's bridged between you and another person for them to even to have to, to listen to you. So last winter, I, did, I uh, took a sabbatical, and a sabbatical is just kind of a time of rest. And I took it before uh, Pastor Mike and, and Pastor Josh came on uh, and, and joined us. And so I was, I've been here for seven years, and I was already kind of like, man, I got I to gotta take a breather, right? And so uh, I decided to do something completely different. Usually you take a sabbatical, you do, you kind of like rest, and you kind of take a, you know, like a little vacation. What I wanted to do is I wanted to visit different churches in the valley. And this is, if you, if you know me, this is complete out, out of my personality. I'm not one of that person who will just kind of go out of my way to like uh, do crazy things with a lar large crowd of people, right? I'm not like that person. I'm, uh, there's a lot of folks that are like that who just, where you get kind of like overwhelmed by a lot of crowds, right? And so what I decided to do is I decided to visit churches. My, my goal was to go six weeks uh, to, to, to church every week. And so I ended up only going to three here in the valley. I'm not going to tell you what churches I went to because uh, I don't want to put them on blast or anything like that. So what I did is uh, I told my wife, I'm going to do this. First week, I didn't do anything because <laughs> I got, got nervous. And then I'll, I'll tell you why. Second week, I didn't do anything either. I just was like, nope, I'm not going to do anything. Third week, 
I told my kids, hey, I'm going to go to a church, a different church. You want to you go with me? And I asked my son Ezekiel. He said, nope. I asked my, my, my daughter Hannah. She said, nope. Because they're very similar like me. They don't want to. They're just different. And, uh, I, I, and then I asked my daughter Lily. She's like, yes, I'll go. She, is, she was super excited to go to different churches because I, 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 I told her what church we're going to. And so I, uh, I, 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 on that Sunday morning, one, on the first Sunday morning, I was like, okay, we're going to go. We went a little bit earlier. Uh, I uh, got to the parking lot. I, I showed up a little bit early because I'm used to being early to church on Sundays. And I don't want to do this. I, 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 so I, I get in the parking lot. I park really far. Because, and I'm early, and I'm like, you know, and I, tell, I, I look to my daughter, I say, hey, Lily, I'm kind of hungry right now. You want to go grab something to eat real quick before service? Knowing that if I take my time and then blame it on, uh, uh, on, on the fast food driver, blame it on Starbucks or whatever, oh, they took, it took too much time and we can't go to church. She's like, Dad, we're already here. You need to get out. We need to go get going. This is my, this is, she was, she's seven years old at the time, and I was like, okay. So... I sit there for like, you know, a few more minutes and just kind of like, man, I can't do this. I can't do this. This is awkward. I don't know anybody at this church. I don't know anything about this church. I don't even know what they believe. I'm just going to go in. I've heard a lot of great things about it. So I get off, finally go in, go inside the, the, the sanctuary. Nobody says hi to me. For real. This is weird. Nobody says hi to me. I say hi to somebody. And then I say, well, you know, I, uh, I got my daughter with me. Where do I go for her children's church? And so they, t- they direct me where to go. And so my daughter, Lily, she goes uh, into a, to, to, to where they do their check-in and everything like that, kind of like what we'd have back here. They put a badge on her, and she gets super excited because she sees one of her t- uh, teachers there, sees friends of hers from her class at that church. So she's having a great time. She's like, super excited. Ooh, and she leaves me. She, 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 and so I'm there just standing there like, Dude, do I just go back to my car and just kind of hang out and then uh, wait for about 45 minutes and then go pick her up? I for real was thinking this. And so I go into the sanctuary. I, I hang out there, and I, I had a great time in worship. I sat in the back pew for real. I was like, I'm going to be like a, uh, nobody knew me. I, I sat in the back row. I, I lifted my hands during worship. It was a great time. It was awesome. And then I, I go to the back after service is done. And I go meet my daughter, and she's super excited. She's sweating, and she's like, this is so much fun. I had some friends here. We learned about this. And I said, hey, that's pretty cool. So we go home. We talk about it. Next week, second week, I say, hey, let's go to another church. And she's like, yes, cool. Which church? And I say, the church. And she's like, all right, I know people there. Great. You know everybody. How do you know everybody? You're seven years old. For real. This is so crazy. So again, I get to the church, big church, go to the parking lot. I park real far again because I just like, dude, I don't want to do this. This is not me. This is awkward. I don't know anybody else. It's winter. It's cold. I don't want to do this. So I go in. I say hi to somebody. My daughter, it's like she knew the building already, but she, she kind of, she goes to the children's area. One of the things about this church is that a teacher, her teacher, was one of the children's workers there. She had a connection. She felt comfortable. Then she also seen some more friends there. And of course, I go back into service by myself, just kind of like chilling, just and again in the back row. And like, it's kind of cool about this church. They had the lights off too. I was in the back and I was like, heck yeah. Nobody knows me. But it was weird because I felt really awkward and, and, and just kind of out of place because I didn't know anybody there. Third week. I got a little bit more courage. And so I decided to, to go to a church that's a little bit closer to Fruta. It's a bigger church in Fruta. Giving you a clue where it's at. Um, I, know, I, I, I know some friends that I have there. So I'm like, hey, it's kind of exciting. I'm going to go there. I decide to go to the early morning service. It's like an 8.30 morning service. Yeah, that's uh, super early to go on a Sunday morning. Most of you here are, are here at the 10.30s because it's, you know, it's a little bit harder for you to get up and you've got kids and stuff like that, right? So I decide to go there. I park a little closer because I'm like, oh, I know somebody here. I sh- I'll find somebody I know here. I get into the sanctuary. I get into the building. I don't know anybody. It's a different crowd in there. It's the uh, people who are the early risers. They have no kids there. It seems like they didn't have any kids there. My daughter, she goes, again, Lily's with me. She goes with me. 
She knows the children's pastor there. She knows kids also from kids' camp. And she fits in just normal. She's having a blast. She's having a great time. I see the children's pastor. My wife and her have had a had, have had connection before, and so I'm like, I feel a little bit comfortable and stuff like that. So I go into the sanctuary, and I get super awkward and super weirded out because I, ha- I sit in, so what I did is like, all right, I'm going to try something different. I'm not going to go up to the top. I'm not going to go in the back row. I'm going to go right dead center in the, the whole building. I enjoyed worship. I enjoyed uh, the, the, the teaching and everything like that, but I still felt awkward because I didn't know anybody there kind of figured out that my friends were probably going to be, they have kids, they're probably going to go into the the later o'clock service. I feel really awkward when when I visit a church that I don't know anybody. We use this line with our friends and our families. Hey, why don't you go to church? Why don't you go to my church? One of the things that's honestly what it does, it turns people off if you tell them what to do. My wife and I, we, we... we do this joke. I do this joke. She doesn't like it, but whenever she tells me what to do, I say, don't tell me what to do. You're not my boss. That's what I tell her. However, she is my boss, so it's just kind of like whatever. It's just kind of a thing that I've been doing it for a long time. She tells me, hey, go take out the trash. Don't tell me what to do. You're not my boss. And it's the same thing what we do with people. Hey, come to my church. They don't want to. Why? I don't want to. Don't tell me what to do. Also, too, they don't know what they're getting themselves into. When I, took, when I decided to go to these different churches, I didn't know what I was getting into. I didn't know anybody. I just stepped out and just kind of like, hey, I'm going to go do this. We use this line as a go-to line. Praise and worship is amazing. The pastor speaks so well. He's so hilarious. He's so funny. Uh, you're going to have life change there. It's going to be awesome. Why don't you come? We act like inviting people is the only way to make disciples. Just like in Matthew uh, chapter 4. We tell them, hey, come to my church. Hey, there, I've already did my Christian duty. I made a disciple. John chapter 1. Talking about John the Baptist. And John the Baptist is a prophet who's... uh, talking about the coming Messiah, the the coming Lamb of God, the the one who's going to save this world. And he's he's, he's introducing who Jesus is. He's telling telling his disciples, there's somebody greater that's coming, bigger than I am. He's saying, I'm so unworthy even to untie his sandals. So verse 35, the next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. Verse 36, when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the Lamb of God. Verse 37, the two, when the two disciples heard this, they, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? In different versions that, I, that I've read, it says, what do you seek? So we got these two disciples that, 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 that have heard about Jesus. And they decided to follow him. One thing about Jesus is this. He, he, he didn't ask, uh, the, these disciples didn't ask uh, uh, Jesus, hey, Jesus, what, what synagogue are you going to go to? Hey, Jesus, what church are you going to go to? Hey, Jesus, hey, I heard that you do uh, miracles. Where are you going to be at? I want to be there. They didn't say that. So what they, what they say in verse, 30, uh, uh, in verse 38 What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Jesus isn't bothered by this question. He's not put off by this question. It's kind of a weird question to you think, hey, hey, so where where are you staying, Jesus? Jesus doesn't, doesn't really blink an eye. He says, you know what? Verse 39, come. He replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying, and they spent the day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. That was the beginning of a three-year journey for these disciples. That's a different thought of what we think about making a disciple. 
Investing our time with people is more important than inviting them into a building. It would have been really easy for Jesus to say, hey, tomorrow morning I'm going to be at the, at the temple here, uh, so I'll be there and I'll, and I'll show you what I'm doing. No, he said, hey, why don't you come with me? Let's just hang out. People want connection. They want you to be genuine. There's people that are hurting. There's people that are confused. There's people that, that, that are searching for something. Making disciples like Jesus did is sharing your life with someone, being real with someone. We shouldn't just invite someone to church and say, hey, come and listen. No, what it should be is, come, let's do life together. Maybe it's, if, if you have that person in your mind, maybe it's just simple as this, hey, hey, I'm going to text you here uh, tonight. Hey, Liz, why, why don't we do lunch tomorrow? Let's go grab a coffee. Let's go, let's go. Hey, do, hey you have your son or your daughter's uh, 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 basketball game. Hey, can I go to that? Hey, I heard that you're going to have a birthday party. Can I come to that? That's kind of weird if you invite yourself to a birthday party, right? <laughs> Kind of a, a rabbit trail. So last, last week, we, my son, my, my, my kids, we have, a, we have three birthdays in August. It, it's, it, they're, they're literally six days apart. So, so my, my, my Lily is on, on the 24th, Ezekiel's on the 28th, and mine is uh, the 30th. So it's like Christmas in August for us. <laughs> and so there was a little, my son, we went to, to his school. Like, it's his last year. He's a fifth grader. He's too cool. Like, it's, it's like one of those, like, he's too cool for us right now. So we, we, we bring him cookies and, and stuff like that, and he's like, I, he walks into the, the, to the uh, <laughs> he walks into the, the, the class, he sees me there, he says hi to his mom, and then all he does to me, because he's too cool, he just goes like this. I'm like, dude, come on, bro, I still give you kisses at night, come on, you can't be too cool for me. So we're celebrating his birthday, and so one of the, what's funny about inviting <laughs> is that there's this little boy who's sitting there next to Ezekiel. He's, hey, Ezekiel. Hey, Ezekiel. I heard you're having a birthday. Are you having a birthday? Ezekiel's like, yeah, I'm having a birthday party. It would really be really cool if I could come to it. And it was so awkward, though, because it was like, Ezekiel, you are a jerk right now because you didn't invite him. He's like, Dad, I don't really like him that much. He's, he gets in trouble and, and stuff like that. I'm like, well... And so he's like, yeah, sure. But so he's like, yeah, sure. And so my wife uh, exchanged numbers with the little boy. He didn't end up coming. But it was just one of those weird things is inviting yourself to a birthday party that you're just like, hey, can I come? <laughs> do things that invite people to do, uh, to do things that you're already doing. My, my, uh, my wife is, is awesome because last week we had a, a birthday party. <laughs> Saturday we had a birthday party and we had seven little girls. It felt like there was a hundred little girls at our, at our house. If you know anything about little girls, they, they have a higher pitch decibel that's just like it reaches to like really annoyance and just kind of like, Jesus, please come now because I really want to. Uh... And so we had seven little girls at our home and they spent the night but one of the things that was really cool about Lily, she, we gave her an opportunity to, hey, we want to, you want to invite some, uh, some people to, to, how, to, your how, to our house and for, for a sleepover and stuff like that. And she goes, yeah, I want to invite my friends. Okay, great. We're going to call uh, uh, Pastor Paul. We're going to get Selah. We're going to get, you know, maybe Zoe and all this stuff and all the different kids from here at the church. And she goes, no, I want to invite kids from my school. Okay, I don't know these families. It's kind of weird. Okay. She goes, Dad, I just want people that I spend my time with. Every day she, she hangs out with these little girls at, at school, at lunch, at recess. They're having fun. So she wanted to invest her time and share something with them rather than just kids that she sees here at church. But she wanted to... to, to uh, invest her heart, her life into these girls that she hangs out with every day of her life. 
So one of the girls' mom comes, and, and she comes in the morning, and she's, uh, she's ready to pick uh, her daughter up. And, and uh, the great thing about my wife is that she invites her in, and I thought the mom was going to leave really quickly. That's just My wife is very, uh, she likes to chat. She just likes to have a conversation with people. And so with her, she just starts asking questions with this mom. Hey, you know, I see our daughters are having fun. I, I, uh, I don't know how it got to. I was in the kitchen, and I was just hanging out and just kind of listening and kind of uh, playing on, uh, on a tablet and everything like that. I was like a little kid just kind of being distracted. You know, when you distract a little boy or a little kid, you're like, hey, here's a tablet. That's what my wife did to me. So that way I'm not weirding people out. <laughs> and so, so she gets having this conversation with this mom, and, and this mom is like, hey, yeah, we go to this church here, um, here, uh, real close to here. My wife's like, oh, cool, that's awesome. Hey, we, we, go, to, we go to this church that's right, like, really close as well. It's right next door, literally. So, so um, she's like, oh, cool, and she's like, she kind of like tried to weasel her way out of it, and she goes like, yeah, well, you know, we like the praise and worship at our, my, my girls like the praise and worship uh, at, at this church, and my wife's like, well, if you like praise and worship, my husband it does the worship, is a worship pastor, worship leader here at our church. Their music is awesome. And the lady's like, oh, okay, cool. I mean, but my daughters really, really like this, uh, the, children's, uh, the children's pastor here at this church and the children's ministry. It's awesome. And then my wife's like, hey, if you don't know, FYI, I'm the children's pastor at this church right over here. We're pretty awesome. We already know you kind of like, you know. And she's like, oh, okay, that's kind of weird. I mean, whatever, sure. Okay, cool, that's cool. And then she goes, well, my, my daughters, they like these treats at, at the church. They like the, the, these awesome treats in the morning, and they get these. And then I was like, well, if you like treats, we have a lot of different treats every Sunday morning. There's cake, there's donuts, there's cookies, there's coffee, sometimes there's juice. So you can come to our church too. And then she's like, well, I, I, I was raised a different way, so... And so what the thing is, is that we are investing our time into people. We're trying to make a connection with people. Hey, we're the same as you. Hey, you like treats and donuts? Shh, I like them too. Like, we can have one together. Having a connection with somebody. Yesterday, my son had his birthday party. Again, it's like Christmas in August. It's, it's ridiculous. And uh, he, uh, he has a friend sleep over. And the mom is, uh, we've been investing two years with them, two years. We haven't seen them in church, but we're, we're praying that God, with just us being friends with people, we've broke bread at a Chili's together. We've done things together. So the mom, she comes and she says, hey, I heard Ezekiel's in flag football. We would like to go on his, one of his games. For us, that's kind of a win because this is a chance for us just to be normal people. Yeah, we'll give you the information. And then we're like, hey, when is your son's game? We want to go to that too. What we're doing is we're, we're taking time out of our day to show the love of Christ. We just want to be there. We want to share a connection with people. From there, you'll find many opportunities to, to, to verbally share your faith with them, your family, your coworker, whoever it is that you have in your heart. Allow them to see your faith played out in everyday life. What I'm saying, I don't want you to go and, 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 and go to the clubs and be like, hey, I'll go minister with you at the clubs and say, just kind of talk about Jesus or wherever, the bars, that's, that's, that'll be awesome. No, 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 that's not what I'm talking about. Do normal things, regular things. People want to have a friend. So our takeaway this morning is, as a primary model, what Jesus, what, what Jesus did with these two disciples it's not, hey, come to the church and listen. Like these two disciples, they show us something uh, that all of us, even those outside of, of the Christian faith, maybe that they're desiring. We want to see something authentic. We want to see something real. People want to have a connection with you. They heard, John the, they, heard, they heard John the Baptist talk about Jesus, this Jesus. They heard about him having faith in Jesus. And so what they wanted to do is once they, when, they, when they found out about this Jesus, that he was here, they wanted to experience what Jesus was doing. And 
And all Jesus did is say, hey, come. You'll see. Hang out with me. You don't have to go over there. Just come and hang out with me. We get caught up with the complexity of inviting people to a building. It's simple. Let Jesus build the church. We have to, all we have to do is make a disciple. Investing and in inviting people around us to know Christ. Investing our time with people is more important than inviting them to a building. Allow people to see your faith played out in everyday life. So if you're sitting there this morning and you're wondering, uh, there's, somebody, there's somebody that you have in your heart. There's somebody that you've been investing and you're just like, ah, uh, I would like them for them to come to church or they would like them to know Christ. Number one, know Christ. In two weeks, we have this back to church Sunday. Invest your time. Go out of your way to invite them somewhere. Hang out in the break room. Go take a walk uh, during your 15 minutes break at, 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 at work. Walk around the building with them. Do something. Show them that you care. Be a part of their life. If that's that family member that you, you've been struggling to talk to, it's not hard. Just pick up the phone. Send a quick text message. Say, hey, let's go, let's go get some coffee. If you don't like coffee, get some tea or whatever. It's easy. We make it too hard on ourselves. And if you do invite somebody to church and you do invite them, be sure that you're here. You don't want to be like that weirdo that just kind of that sits in the back row like me and just kind of parks far away and just kind of like, I don't know anybody. If you see one of your, your family members come for the first time or anything like that, connect with them. They want connection. People want connection. God, we thank you for, for what you're doing, God. Lord, I pray for every person that they have boldness in everything that they do. God, every, every step that they take, every gesture that they, that they do, every word that they speak, let it be in your image, God, in your characteristics. We thank you, God, for what you're doing in people's lives. Give us the courage just to share our faith, to be real with people. We thank you in Jesus' name. So this morning, I'm going to invite our, our, our uh, worship team to, 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 to lead us in some worship. But before we do that, I'm going to give an opportunity for those who don't know Christ as their, their Lord and Savior. I'm not telling you that we're going to invite you into like a weird cult or anything like that. It's what we, we want you to know is that there is a God out there that loves you so much that he came down from heaven he died on a cross for our sins, to bear the sin of this world. And he rose again on the third day to defeat death, to defeat that sin, so that way one day we can live in, to be with him in heaven. I'm going to give you a moment just to kind of gather your thoughts and just kind of just make a, your own prayer to God and say, God, I just surrender everything that I am. God, I know that you love me. I want to follow you. Having Jesus in your life is the greatest adventure you'll ever take. To know that the God of this universe will never leave you, will never leave you behind. No matter what you're, what you're doing, no matter where you're at, God loves you.